So I spent the past few days with my Xbox Series X and I figured I'd make a video on my experience and what I think about it. So let's do it. Well, we all know that next gen began for both PlayStation and Xbox last week, and it seems like both companies are offering something very special for their fans. And this week, I wanted to do a full-blown review for the Xbox Series X, but there was just one problem. I couldn't record any gameplay to use for the video. And that was really what my review was based around, was how the new hardware improves different aspects of the gameplay. I was hoping to be able to show off things like load times and how games look and feel with the new hardware, but the game DVR is currently broken on Series X. They're working on a patch as we speak and hopefully that's up soon so I can start showing some actual clips of Series X gameplay. But in the meantime, I wanted to at least talk about what I've been loving on the Series X this past week. So let's get started. First off, I want to start with load times. I mean, you've seen the videos online of how quick this thing boots up and it actually boots up faster than my TV can register the source. In fact, what I'll do is I'll record a little video of this to show how fast the console boots up, but really it's one of those things that you see and think, well, that's cool, but when you actually have it in your house and you're using it, you really can't believe how long you used to wait for the Xbox One to boot up. And obviously load times and games are just vastly improved over Xbox One. You really notice a massive difference in games like Forza Horizon 4, which used to take forever to load on Xbox One. And now you load in super quick and then you can just start playing. And the second thing I want to talk about is how these games feel. But before I do that, I want to say that I used to play a lot of Destiny 2 on console all the time and I always had an absolute blast. But after playing all of these games in 60 FPS like AC Valhalla, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, The Witcher 3, Halo MCC, and plenty more, it really is kind of jarring to boot up Destiny 2 and play in 30 FPS. And I know that little tangent seems irrelevant, but that's really my point when I'm talking about the performance of this console. Like it does 60 FPS so well that when you go back to 30 FPS games, it's, it's incredibly noticeable. For example, all of those games that I mentioned, with the exception of Valhalla, I played in 60 FPS or performance modes on Xbox One X. But I think the only games that consistently stuck to 60 FPS on Xbox One X were Forza Horizon 4 and Gears 5. Witcher 3 often dipped like well below 60 FPS, especially when you rode through Novigrad. And Halo MCC dipped frames whenever you went into the Halo 2 anniversary campaign, especially, especially on the Delta Halo mission. And there were even points in the Halo 4 campaign where Halo MCC would dip pretty hard on the Xbox One X. But absolutely all of that is alleviated just by the raw power of these new systems. I mean, as of the date I'm recording this, MCC and Witcher 3 haven't even been updated for the new hardware yet, so all of the performance boosts are based simply on the tech in the box. Even a game like Fallout 4, which had serious problems with stuttering on the Xbox One X and the OG Xbox One, runs without a hitch on Series X. It really can't be understated what a boost in performance this thing is. And I think another factor that plays into how games feel on the new Xbox consoles is the new controller. Like for me personally, I'm a guy who uses an Elite Series 2 controller and I love it. I think that it's just the best controller that gaming has to offer. Everything about it is pretty much perfect. The grips, the triggers, the weight, the thumbsticks, it's, it's great. And going into this generation, I fully expected to never even use the new controller. But once I booted up Forza Horizon 4 with the controller, I instantly could tell there was a massive difference. And it all comes down to the latency. It's something that you've never really even thought of or paid much attention to when playing on an Xbox One, but when you get on this new controller, you can instantly tell how much faster and responsive these games are. And hopping over to a game like Gears 5 or Halo and playing with a new controller is just incredible, and it's something that I really can't even put into words. You just kind of have to have it in your hands and experience it for yourself. 
but I can tell you that I haven't used my Elite Series 2 controller since my Series X arrived. Now, eventually sometime next year, Xbox will roll out updates for previous gen controllers for the low latency, but until then, I think that this new controller is going to be my main gaming controller. And up next, I wanted to talk about visuals, and this is something that's really obvious, and you're going to notice it immediately. And since I don't have the ability to show you gameplay, which is what I wanted to do, I'll likely just add some screenshots in the video here to give you some examples of what I'm talking about. Games like Gears 5 show some seriously improved lighting over the original version on Xbox One thanks to improved screen space global illumination. And then there's Forza Horizon 4 which has much improved reflections, especially over the performance mode on Xbox One X. And I can't even come up with the words to describe how damn good Ori looks at 4K 120fps on my Q70T. And I also feel like the HDR pops so much more than it did on my Xbox One X, and I can't really prove that. Maybe it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. I'm not sure, but either way, everything looks so crisp. But unfortunately, not everything can be positive, and I have one pretty big negative for the Series X that I'm sure you all have heard by now. And I'm speaking, of course, about the launch lineup. Now, obviously, there's a pretty huge Halo-sized gap that needs to be filled, but it can't really be filled because nothing is ready to fill it at the moment. And really, I think this is just a symptom of Microsoft being kind of late to the party in terms of acquiring studios and talent to build their IP. I mean, keep in mind, they didn't start this quote-unquote acquisition spree until 2018, and it's been going on up until now. So these acquisitions aren't really paying off in the short term. It's more of a long-term play. In the next one, two, three years, that's when we're going to start to see the fruits of all this labor. But realistically, that does leave us with a less-than-ideal launch lineup. But that really hasn't affected me much at all. I mean, I've been jumping back between Valhalla, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, and Halo MCC for most of this past week, and I've been loving it. And the final thing I wanted to talk about is Quick Resume. Now, Quick Resume is a great feature. The problem is that some games just don't work with Quick Resume right now. From what I can tell, all of the games that are unoptimized for Series X and S work with Quick Resume, and the games that are optimized are kind of spotty. So far, I can confirm that out of the games that I regularly play, the only game that's optimized that works with Quick Resume is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But Gears 5 and Forza Horizon 4 don't seem to be working with Quick Resume at the moment, and I'd assume that this is just due to the hardware coming in hot, as dealer gaming likes to say. And really, I'm not too concerned about it, as these things will be patched and fixed in the coming days and weeks. But I can say that playing AC Valhalla and then booting up Halo MCC and being right in the middle of a mission where I left off is just impressive. And this is the kind of feature that I could honestly see leading people to play more games. Because if you can just start a new game and jump back into an old game super quick, then you might be more inclined to play that new game. But all in all, for $500, I just couldn't be happier with my purchase. I really couldn't be happier. The Series X is a console that brings all of my games forward and plays them better than ever before and makes them look better than ever before thanks to implementations of Auto HDR. So you could go all the way back to original Xbox games with 360 games with Auto HDR that were never developed with HDR in mind. And I think if you're a fan of Xbox and you're looking for a premium experience, then this is a no-brainer purchase. And it's exciting to think that in a few years, I'll be playing games like Starfield, Hellblade 2, Avowed, Fable, Elder Scrolls 6, all on this one box. I feel like I always say this, but really, it is genuinely an exciting time for gamers. But what do you guys think? Did you pick up a Series X last week? If so, let me know what your favorite thing is about the system and what you've been playing this past week. Leave a like if you liked the video and please subscribe if you'd be so kind. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.